Albert decided to be in the Elite Eight. We uh, never been to a Final Four at Alabama. It, neither is Clemson, I guess. So, you got um, two schools trying to get to their first one. I think everybody will be amped up, ready to play. We're, we're trying to get healthy. Guys kind of saw Pringle limping around out there. He had a heel bruise. He's been fighting through the year and get flared up. So he's getting treatment all day. Hopefully we can get him back. Right, so it continues to be evaluated by the doctor and the trainer. He's day to day. And other than that, um, other than Cosby being out with the fracture in his foot, wow, we should be healthy. You know, Clemson, uh, we played them in a non conference. They, they, they were good. Uh, we didn't play well. They, they played well. We got to do a lot better. Um, you know, they're going to make adjustments from the first game. We're going to make adjustments. We, they, they were way too comfortable shooting it. They shot over 50% from three when we played them at our place. So, and particularly in the second half, they were 8 of 11. So we got to do a better job with their shooters. I thought we did a good job last night with Carolina's shooters, making sure that their main shooters didn't uh, get loose for free threes. So it's, uh, you know, Short night because we uh, or a long night, however you want to look at it. Not much sleep, long night, not a lot of sleep. Trying to get ready, but I think our players looked pretty locked in uh, early this morning when we went through video, and we'll uh, we'll have a short light practice here this afternoon, and then try to get them rested. And I think fresh legs, fresh minds, important uh, for the game tomorrow. All right, we'll open it up for questions. Start in the second row. Hold, we'll get a mic holder. Mike, over to you. There you go. Ryan Hennessy, NBC 13 in Birmingham. Coach, do you like that you played this team before? Do you think that's an advantage or a disadvantage that they have tape on you? They have tape on us. We have tape on them. You know, I don't mind it. You know, we've told our players from game one to game two who's going to make the best adjustments. Sometimes... We did. Sometimes we didn't. You know, we, we I thought we did play better against Mississippi State second time around than even the first time we won both. Thought we improved from the first time we played Tennessee to the second time. Wasn't good enough to beat them, but they're a really good team. Uh, Auburn wasn't. You know, we didn't. So there's some of the times we made better improvements from game one to game two. We're going to definitely need to be the one to make better improvements this game because they, they were significantly better than we were at our place and we you know we, we didn't handle their physicality well I think we're playing better handling physicality more uh, North Carolina was a physical team I thought we did a good job handling that one so you know this is a this is one that I'm probably glad that we played them early so our players have some idea of the physicality and how good their bigs are because they're, they're you know they, they their bigs hurt us a lot inside and their guards hurt us too I mean we didn't do a good job taking away their best players. I thought, you know, Hall and Gerard and Hunter all, all got off on us pretty good the first time. We'll go to the third row. Get a mic over to you. Katie hey, Mendem from Bama Central. Um, talking to the players a little bit about whether they view this as a revenge game, Aaron said, as a competitor, it, that's part of it. Is that something you're using as motivation for this game, or is – being the first team to get to the Final Four in program history, motivation enough? I, I mean, we'll use whatever we can at this point, whatever we think our, resonates with our players. But I think as a competitor, if you've got some pride, you got embarrassed on your home court earlier in the year and you got a chance to redeem it on a neutral floor, I'd think that'd be a little extra motivation for you right there. But, you know, Clemson's also trying to make their first Final Four. They're going to be extra motivated. So... We can't just rely on being motivated because the other team's going to be motivated too. We got to be locked into a scouting report, focused, detail oriented. Th things that we've been good at here in the tournament that maybe we lacked uh, during the course of the year at different times. We'll keep it in the third row. Josh Peter with USA Today. I was t asking the players about the strong finishes you guys have had the last two games and what's allowed you to do it. And Ryland pointed out it's not what happened with the non conference uh, schedule. And sort of learn from that. What has your team learned? Have you been able to put it together the last two games? Yeah, we we try to talk through 
you know, what do we learn from every game? You know, and I, I talked to our players if, you know, when we got here late before the NCAA tournament started, like, what, what have we learned, like, from the losses particularly? Like, they're not failures if you learn from them. You know, there's lots of things in life that don't go the way you want them to go, and if you, if you learn from it, it can be a win even if it was a loss at the moment. So, you know, one one of the big things was our last eight minutes, last 12 minutes of the games, we weren't good in the non-conference. You know, we were tired. We made bad decisions. We folded. We collapsed. So, you know, I took that time out about eight minutes. We had the media time out shortly after that. And both those time out, I think the the energy was like, like we got to go now. Now, we still ended up being down. You know, they made a little run there. R.J. Davis got going a little bit, and they took the lead. I thought our guys showed a lot of resilience. And we, we talked to them about sometimes you're going to do things right, and you just, the other team's going to make tough shots, and you just got to go to the next play. So, like, let's quit dwelling on it and not feel sorry for ourselves. Let's go to the next play. Let's The last play should have no uh, impact on the next play, and I think we've done a pretty good job moving on to the next play, especially at the end of games just figuring out a way to get some some wins. We'll go to Jordan here in the second row. Uh, Jordan Mendoza, USA Today. Um, you're at a school that's always going to be associated with football, with the amount of success it's had on the football field. You've mentioned you know, that we have a chance to go to the first Final Four in school history. Um, and also, this is your second Elite Eight ever in school history. What does this moment mean for Alabama basketball, and what could it mean to go to its first um, Final Four? Yeah, we got Two schools like that here, right? Alabama and Clemson playing in L.A. They, most people think we're playing the Rose Bowl out here probably, right? They, so the basketball Rose Bowl. We, uh, I, I think it'd be huge, you know, because we came in and Alabama football is obviously the best football program in the country over the course of college football. In my opinion, they've got all kinds of national championships, but it's been – you know, multiple sports have won national championships at Alabama. The, the athletic department as a whole is a championship level athletic department, and we needed to get men's basketball up up to the level that, that a lot of other sports are at. So, you know, if you could make, you know, the Final Four, obviously winning the national championship is the biggest thing, but the Final Four is huge, men's basketball. So if you can get to a Final Four and kind of put yourself on that stage, I think we've been able to recruit some high-level Players, players want to play here. We, we've won two SEC regular seasons, two SEC tournaments since we've been here. We, we've won a lot, but we've never been to a Final Four. So making a Final Four would be very big for the program. Would show that we're competing with all the best programs in the country for the biggest thing. You know, you're trying to win a national championship. Well, Final Four is that step right before winning a national championship, and we haven't been to. Final Four yet, so this would this would be the biggest win in the history of Alabama basketball if we could pull it off. And I think our players understand the enormity of the game, and I think their preparation, their effort will match their understanding of how important this game is. Next in the third row here, Coach Ben Dolliver, Washington Post. Uh, last night you were talking about the challenges of game planning on a quick turnaround. You know, from a Thursday game to a Saturday game. And we had the pleasure of having some of your grad students sitting behind us. And I think they were the loudest, most locked in people in the entire building during that game. I'm curious, what role or responsibilities do those guys have in helping getting you ready for a team like Clemson? And then in game, what exactly is their role? Because it seems like they were hype men. They really knew Carolina's playbook, it seemed like, as well, from what I could overhear. And just curious what role they have for you guys. Yeah, we, we rely on our GAs a lot, and, and they're good. They um, they help with a lot. They help put the scouting. You know, they help the assistant in charge of the scout put the video together to go. So they're working ahead because I'm not going to look at the next team until we're done playing the current team. But they are. You know, they're working ahead all the time, and so they've got everything ready to hand to the assistant in charge of it when they need to. Um, goes from everything trying to listen to the video with the sound up, trying to get play calls off the sound and looking at hand signals to get play calls. So they're, they've got that all in their head. They've tried to teach it to everybody, but they, they know it pretty well. In the course of the game, we chart a lot of things. We chart offensive efficiency, defensive efficiency. They're charting that. Like, you know, 
paint touches, different things we've got on the. I get an offensive sheet, a defensive sheet, a blue collar sheet, and the general stats. So I got four sheets of paper in my hand every time out, and they're responsible for three of those four: the offensive, defensive, and the blue collar one. So, you know, the GAs along with our regular ma undergrad managers, you know, do a lot of work for us. So, it, it it's cool that everybody's super invested in wins and losses from your head coach down to your managers to everybody in the program. And I think we've got that. I think it's part of the reason we've been winning at the level we've been winning over the last four years because you get everybody in the program super invested in winning and losing. And you, you, it's nice that you're able to sit by some of them that aren't even on the bench and they're super invested in winning and losing. Up here, here, third row, and then we'll come to you guys. Coach, we talk about your play, Chris Stewart, Crimson Tide Sports Network. We talk about your players or how you as a staff help them to understand the moment and, and deal with everything that they're in right now. But how do you personally manage the moment when it's a new experience for you as well? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, it kind of takes me back to when I was interviewing with Danny White to get my first head coaching job in Division One, and Keith Dambride had kind of been running the league in the MAC at Akron, and he's made the tournament at Duquesne this year, and he's going to retire. He's a great coach, and he kind of asked me the question, you know, when you look down and see Coach Dambride, what, like it's my five players against his five players, it's not me against him. It's, you know, it's the same thing. We, you know, we coached against some pretty good coaches in our league, coached against some pretty good coaches. At the end of the day, the ball goes up, I'm coaching my five guys on the floor, everybody else co and I got to prepare myself to coach the five guys on the floor and the guys on the bench. And I've done that hundreds of times as a high school coach. And you kind of just lose yourself in, in the game and start coaching. So how do I prepare myself? I mean, you know, I didn't have to do all this at Romulus, but I coached a few hundred games at Romulus. And when the ball goes up, it's not that much different. There's a few more cameras on me around here. There's a few more people in the stands. My players need to feel the energy coming from me. They need to know that I know what I'm doing, so I got to prepare myself so that I'm the most prepared coach going in, and they know it, and they've got confidence in that. I got to sell them on the fact that we're the most prepared team because we're going to be. Our guys always go into games with a ton of confidence, knowing we got the scouting report down. They just got to execute it and play hard. That's what I do. So I don't – after the season's over, if we can win another game and you understand that you made a Final Four, there will probably be some time to relax and reminisce on it and think about how great it was. But right now we got to win another game. Like this doesn't happen very often. We've only been to one other Elite Eight in the history of Alabama. It was 20 years ago. You don't want to take this for granted. I can't. I told our players, don't, you know, Coach Saban calls it rat poison all the time. But if you wanted, you could get on your phone and look at the social media and, and type your name in and see hundreds of people talking about how great you were. That has nothing to do with preparing to play the next game. So I told them, if you, if you, if you want to get to a Final Four, you got to be disciplined enough to put that rat poison out, get locked in on what we need to do for the next 24 hours, be prepared to beat this team. Because anything else is a total distraction. I said, like, like every minute for the next 24 hours needs to go into recovery with the trainer. And some of that's a nap and sleep. Some of it being with the trainer or preparation to win the game. Anything else, if you're not disciplined enough to stay off social media and not waste a bunch of time doing that, I don't know how serious you are about winning. The same thing goes for me. Like I don't keep any social media on my phone during the season because I think it's Nothing against you reporters, and maybe it's the people out there on Twitter that aren't reporters, but you win a game and you're the best thing ever. You lose a game and you're the worst coach. I, I, I can't live my life like this. and I, So I don't have social media on my phone during the season. I can get on it on the computer if I choose, but you get on it, next thing you know, you wasted an hour that you should have been preparing for a team. So I got to be disciplined to get myself ready to play. The players need to be disciplined to get themselves ready to play. And once the ball goes up, we got 40 minutes of being locked in, super intense. You can't kind of ask the players, why do you play? Well, why do I coach? I got this competitive nature about me. There, You can't match that 40 minutes of competitiveness with anything else you do in life. And I love it. 
I gotta get myself ready to do it. And I don't think it, I don't think there's much else. I gotta get ready to coach this game just like I get ready to coach any other game. Go to the fourth row. Hey, Coach. Uh, Jonah Crell, Arizona PBS. Uh, building off of that, you're talking about kind of your coaching mindset there. Uh, have, have there been any uh, previous coaching mentors or peers of yours that have reached out to you, maybe a text or something, giving you some words of advice uh, to give you uh, that direction and, and tell your players like you just said? Yeah, I mean, Coach Saban's uh, been good. The, the whole next deal – I kind of pull off a conversation with him. He texts to me, next play, next case. You know, he and it, he doesn't do much text. He didn't text, so I probably shouldn't even say text because I think he's not supposed to text. But now that he's not coaching anymore, maybe he texts. So if I wasn't supposed to tell him, but he texts, I apologize to Coach Saban. But he did send me a short short text, and he, he, he was good with it. He's been great. He's a, a resource I've got. He's still got an office on campus, so – I'm going to use that resource. I think he's the best team sports coach in the modern history of team sports and college athletics. Like, he's great to have there. And there's some other coaches. I don't know that I'd necessarily have mentors. Um, you know, obviously, Bobby Hurley hired me. Bobby's been great. I'm friends with Danny. He's doing a great job. But I haven't talked to them a whole lot there. Danny's trying to get his own team to a Final Four and doing a pretty good job, it looks like. But – Talk to some retired coaches. I made a couple calls before the NCAA tournament just to some coaches. I, I called Frank Martin because they, they South Carolina had, if you go back and look when they made their final four run there, they didn't, they were kind of on a down stretch. They had lost a few. Like we, we, we weren't playing our best basketball going into this tournament. Neither were they. Just how do you get your mindset to change? I actually, Talked to Coach Bayheim, who did it twice at Syracuse, weren't playing their best at the end of the regular season. ACC tournament, got on a run, made a Final Four. Like, how do you get – so I reached out to those guys, and they were great. They talked to me about the whole thing. But, you know, I don't – I was a high school coach, and then I coached for Bobby Early for two years, and I became a head coach. So I haven't really worked under – it's been a long time – you know, other than the two years with Coach Early, and he was great. I mean, he's been great to me, and Danny's been great to me. But outside of those two years, it's been a long time since I worked under somebody. It's kind of more older coaches that have been retired that you kind of reach out to or older coaches in the business. I, I you know, I talked to Coach Izzo. He's, he's been great to me when I was in Detroit. He was great, he was great to me. He talked to me about North Carolina just because they had played him, and I knew him. I, I spent – all kinds of time up watching them practice. I, you know, I really looked up to him when I was a high school coach in Detroit, and he and he was great. But got a little couple of guys here and there. We got time for one more question. Go ahead. Miss <clears throat> Terry said that uh, Nick Saban sent his first email to you recently. So oh, you're in the clear there. I think. Okay, he's in the clear. So yeah. he's he's texting, emailing, he's and technology and, savant now. Yeah. Um, but I want to ask about this. Is your 11th night on the road together? Just how is that? How have players handled that? Has there been a benefit to that, knowing that if you went home early, that it will be the end of it for you this season? Yeah, I hope they like being with each other so they, they want to spend a few more nights together on the road in the hotel. But I think they, they've gotten close. I think our leadership's been great. Guys are pulling for each other. And shoot, I, you saw when when your best player you know, all year and Mark Sears needs shoot. I mean, he almost sleepwalks to 20 points on some nights. Like, he didn't get to 20 last night. He was as happy as anybody. He was telling me to run stuff for Grant Nelson late in the game. Like, you know, I think it guys get a little closer being with each other all the time when they get close. And there's that Coach Murphy's word. Coach Murphy came in. Coach Murphy's been texting me a little bit too with softball. He's been great. But he's, uh, you know, they taking on this whole Mudita. He explained to our guys what Mudita means. And we've kind of got shirts made and kind of tried to make it our deal. You know, I think when you spend time together, this much time on the road, you kind of get to know each other, pull for each other better. We, we do this retreat, you know, before classes start in the fall in August, which I think gives them, it's like kind of like 48 hours where you just stay together in one one house. Now we're not all in the same house. We're in the same hotel and it's right down the hall from each other. But it's been good. I, um, like I said, I hope they want to keep staying in the hotel together because if we can get one more win, we'll, we'll have another week together next week. 
We are going to go home this time. We're not staying on the West Coast for three straight weeks. So win or lose, we'll be back on Easter Sunday in Alabama. And then hopefully, if it's a win, then we'll turn back around and come out to the uh, West Coast to go to Phoenix uh, if we're fortunate enough to be playing in Phoenix uh, next weekend. Thanks, Coach.